Megalodon was one big fish. It was a fearsome predator of the ancient oceans that terrorised the inhabitants of these prehistoric seas for almost 20 million years. But just how big was it? The exact dimensions of the giant shark is a hotly debated topic, and it seems like every year there's a new study published that presents a different body size for this animal. The problem is that Megalodon, as a shark, had a cartilaginous skeleton, not one made of bone like ours, and cartilage does not fossilise very well. So most of our understanding of the big fishy of death comes from its fossilised teeth, which do preserve well. Paleontologists are interested in working out the size of Megalodon, technically called Otodus Megalodon, not just because it's a very cool animal, but also because it's one of the biggest marine predators that we know to have existed. Such a large carnivore undoubtedly had significant impacts on the structure of prehistoric food webs and the marine life that coexisted with it. And so understanding its body size and how large it could actually grow enables us to better understand how it may have influenced the evolution of our oceans, in particular the effect it had on whale evolution. Body size can also tell us a lot about the animal itself. For example, a larger size for a shark is generally going to mean that it can probably travel over greater distances, would have fewer predators, and can retain heat better. So we start to get an improved idea of its biology, even without complete body fossils. Plus, of course, knowing how big Megalodon was is important so that we can have a grounded, scientifically rigorous and accurate depiction of this fascinating shark in the next Meg movie. I'd expect nothing less. As I've already explained, most of the megalodon fossils we have are their preserved teeth, and so many of the varying body size estimates are based upon calculations that scale up these tooth fossils. However, we do also have some vertebrae that have been assigned to the giant shark as well. Usually, these bits of the animal's backbone are isolated pieces, but there's one specimen which was unearthed in Belgium that does preserve an almost complete series of vertebrae from megalodon. And this amazing specimen has recently been used to create what is currently the most up-to-date estimate of Megalodon's body shape and size, resulting in a reconstruction that surprised many people, which we'll talk more about in a bit. Lots of different methods of estimating total body size from the relatively limited tooth and vertebrae fossils have been applied by paleontologists in the past, and this has resulted in a huge range of potential sizes for this animal. Some earlier scientific papers from the start of the 20th century cite some quite extreme dimensions for the shark, such as a 1909 estimate putting it at 24.4 metres, or about 80 feet in total length, and another publication in 1922 suggesting that it was 30.5 metres in length, or around 100 feet. For reference, the record for the largest whale shark, the biggest species of living shark, is 18.8 metres, or around 61.7 feet. These estimates were based on scaling up using modern great white sharks, which have long been assumed to be useful modern analogues to Megalodon, as they had been considered to have similar lifestyles and therefore similar body proportions, though there are issues with this assumption that we'll discuss later. However, the rather large estimates made in these early works were actually the result of a bias caused by a mistaken report of a modern great white shark that was said to have been over 11 metres in length, or 36 and a half feet. This report, from 1870, is now considered to have been an error, but it unfortunately was cited a lot and kept being brought up in various publications for many decades, and as such we have these over-exaggerated megalodon size estimates from the early 1900s. It was really only in the 1990s that some more scientifically rigorous methods started to be used to estimate the shark's size. One way this was done was by measuring the front upper teeth of modern great white sharks and comparing great white individuals of different sizes to find a relationship between tooth size and total body length, this time based on accurate measurements of their full body length. This same method was then applied to the teeth of Megalodon, based on the assumption that this extinct shark would have the same size relationships as modern white sharks. These resulted in more conservative estimates, with a 1996 paper stating 15.9 metres, just over 52 feet, as a reasonable size. However, in 2002 another paleontologist, Kenshu Shimada, who you'll be hearing quite a lot about, developed a different method. Instead of measuring the entire tooth, including both the crown and the root, he found that these parts of the teeth did not scale at the same rate as each other as the individual grew, introducing some unreliability if the entire tooth was used to scale. Instead, he introduced a technique based on just measuring the crown of the tooth. This was also useful for cases in which the root of the tooth may have been lost in a fossil, meaning more data could be gathered from the fossil record of this shark. Using this modified technique, an estimate of 15.1 metres 49.5 feet was reached for the monster shark. 
However, other studies continue to use size estimates that have been considered questionable and even sometimes seem to be based on incorrect information or erroneous methods. Which is why you've probably seen recent estimates that vary quite a lot. Some of these estimates have also trickled down into popular media. Shimada's 2002 size estimation technique has also been challenged however. Papers from the early 2000s noted some inconsistencies in the estimates. And then in 2019, Shimada himself revised his previous method by re-examining the relationships between tooth crown height and total body length in modern white sharks. He found that the front teeth on the upper jaw had to be used for estimates rather than the teeth of the lower jaw, as these produced much more variable results. Even more specifically, he found that the second front upper tooth provided more reliable results than the first upper front tooth. Based on this, he therefore concluded that the maximum scientifically justifiable total length estimates for Megalodon were about 14 to 15 meters, about 46 to 49 feet, and that individuals exceeding 15 meters would have been incredibly rare. Other paleontologists have had issues with this method though, because it's difficult to apply to single, isolated teeth from this shark when the exact position of the tooth within the jaws is not known. Therefore, they argue that the technique could introduce a bias to the estimates if the wrong tooth tooth position is assumed, and when the technique is applied to different teeth, it produces widely varying results. In addition, assigning a tooth position requires knowledge of the dental formula of these sharks, that is, the number of each type of tooth and where they are in the jaws. Unfortunately, although there are some known fossils of partially associated megalodon dentitions, comprising lots of loose teeth, we have yet to find a complete articulated megalodon dentition. This means that the dental formula for Megalodon can only be inferred based on the fossil evidence and more comparisons to living sharks. So there is again room for biases as the precise arrangement of the teeth in the jaws differs between studies. And it's not even certain that Megalodon had a dental arrangement like that of a great white. So we're kind of used to seeing Megalodon jaw reconstructions like this fantastic one here, where they sort of assume that the tooth positions are more like a great white sharks, but we don't actually know for certain if they would really be like that considering that they are very different sharks, part of a different lineage of lamniforms. All of this was discussed in another paper published in 2021 in which researchers then presented another new method for estimating megalodon total length. This time, the technique was based on adding together the width of tooth crowns from the partial associated dentitions as well as from other shark species, which they argued produced a more reliable model for predicting body length than tooth crown height. The widest tooth they applied this technique to, a big isolated tooth in the collections of the Florida Museum of Natural History resulted in a maximum body length of 20 meters, or 65.6 feet. Another important aspect of determining Megalodon's size is working out what it may have looked like and how it was proportioned. As I alluded to earlier, despite modern great white sharks having long been thought to be decent analogues for Megalodon's body size and shape, this is actually a problematic assumption. Megalodon was once considered to be a very close relative of white sharks, even being classified as Carcharodon megalodon, the same genus as the great white, Carcharodon carcarius. This is mostly down to the teeth of these sharks looking superficially similar, as they fed in a similar way. However, after more detailed studies of the tooth anatomy of these sharks were undertaken, and we learned more about the evolutionary history of the modern white sharks, it became clear that Megalodon was a member of a different, now completely extinct family of sharks called Otodontidae. Therefore, Megalodon is now classified as Otodus Megalodon. Otodontids first appeared back in the Cretaceous period when dinosaurs still ruled the land, so this lineage of sharks had split off from the group the Great White belongs to, the family Lamnidae, around 115 million years ago. So using great whites as a basis for body size calculations might not be the best idea, since these sharks were members of very different lineages and quite likely had very different body dimensions. In 2020, another group of paleontologists therefore presented a 2D reconstruction of Megalodon's body proportions based upon not just the great white, but also on anatomical measurements of four other modern laminid species that they considered to be ecologically and physiologically comparable to the giant shark, the short fin and long fin mako sharks, the salmon shark, and the poor beagle. After examining the body proportions of all these sharks and establishing how they grow relative to each other, the researchers extrapolated the body dimensions onto different size estimates for Megalodon. They produced a reconstruction of the shark that, at 16 meters, or 52.5 feet, in total length, had a head that was about 4.65 meters long, a 1.62 meter tall dorsal fin, and a tail height of about 3.85 meters. So, pretty immense dimensions. 
This 2D model was further built upon in 2022, when some of the same paleontologists then created a 3D digital model of Megalodon's body, this time based on a rather incredible fossil from Belgium. This fossil preserves 141 vertebrae that come from a single individual which lived at some point during the Miocene Epoch, between 23 and 5.3 million years ago. Unfortunately, the exact age of the specimen is uncertain. The vertebrae were actually originally unearthed in the 1860s, so they've been known about for quite a while. As I explained earlier, the cartilaginous skeletons of sharks very rarely fossilise, but it does still happen sometimes, and the centra of vertebrae are one of the more likely bits to fossilise as they're a particularly dense part of the skeleton. The authors of this 2022 study combined 3D scans of the vertebral column with scans of a partial associated fossil dentition from the US, and a chondrocranium, the name for the cartilaginous skeletal structure of the skull, from a great white shark. They then fleshed out the model using another scan of the full body of a great white, before modifying the proportions based on what they'd established with the previous 2D reconstruction that takes the other living shark species into account. This 3D model was then used to investigate the potential ecology and speed of the giant shark. The researchers found that Megalodon was able to cruise at faster speeds than any shark alive today and was capable of feeding on large prey the size of modern oceanic apex predators. They also inferred that this preference for large body prey would have enabled them to fuel up before long migrations, reducing the need to hunt as they travelled enormous distances across the oceans, labelling them as transoceanic super predators. They also produced an estimated total body length for the Belgian vertebral column, coming to a value of 15.9 metres, 52 feet. However, taking into account other individual megalodon vertebrae found elsewhere that are about 50% larger than the biggest ones in the Belgium specimen, the authors also stated that a maximum total length of 20 metres, 65.6 feet, was supported, as had been predicted from the tooth width method published in 2021. The 3D model was also used to calculate an estimated body mass for a 16 metre long megalodon of a whopping 61,560 kilograms, or nearly 68 US tonnes. Generally then, this body reconstruction method of including data from five different living shark species to inform Megalodon's shape gives us a bit of a stockier shark than a lot of older reconstructions. I've actually talked quite a lot about Megalodon's body shape before, and I did a video on what Megalodon may have really looked like back in Shark Week 2019, discussing a variety of possibilities. But there's now been another study, published in January of 2024, which has once again reassessed the previous body shape and length estimates for the giant shark, and argued that the stocky 2D and 3D models we've just looked at are in fact not very plausible interpretations of Megalodon's body. This study, which includes Shimada in its roster of many authors, once again used the incredible Belgian specimen to argue that Megalodon would have actually had a significantly more elongated body than a white shark. This is because they noted how a previous study from the 90s had attempted to estimate the total body length of the Belgian individual based on calculations derived from the relationship between the maximum width of the vertebra and the total length of the animal in modern great whites. Applying this great white based method to the Belgian vertebral column, the total length of the living animal was found to be 9.2 meters, or about 30 feet. However, there's a bit of a glaring problem with this. The authors of the 2022 3D model had gone and measured the lengths of each vertebra in the column and added them all up, finding that the length of the vertebral column as preserved was 11.1 meters or 36.4 feet. So the calculation based on white sharks had actually underestimated the length of the animal. The paleontologists on this 2024 publication therefore argue that Megalodon must have had a slender proportionally elongated body in comparison to living white sharks. And so all these previous length estimates and body reconstructions that had all been heavily based on great whites cannot be representative of the true look or size of the monster shark. They also caution that we simply can't be sure of what Megalodon really looked like based on our current knowledge, since the fossil evidence we have still isn't enough to tell us for certain beyond the fact that it was proportionally longer than a great white, and there's nothing else quite like a macrophagus shark the size of Megalodon, so the body shape that such a unique fish would need can still only be hypothesized. They also note several issues with the inferences made about Megalodon's lifestyle from the 3D model. They point out that interpreting the murder guppy as a fast long-distance swimmer like a modern white shark 
is rather logically circular, since their reconstruction of the body was based on white sharks and other fast-moving lamnids in the first place. In addition, they explain how some very interesting new data on Megalodon's biology had been published since the 2022 3D model paper. In June of 2023, Shimada and colleagues reported on the discovery of fragments of calcified cartilage and placoid scales from the shark's skin that were associated with a set of Megalodon teeth from Japan. Analyzing the structure of the scales, the paleontologists discovered that the keels were pronounced and broadly spaced, which is consistent with modern sharks that don't swim at fast speeds, such as goblin sharks and megamouth sharks. This again directly contradicts the conclusions from the 3D model, which gave a cruising speed of 4.8 to 5.1 km per hour, whereas the anatomy of the scales seems to suggest a cruising speed of between 0.9 and 3 km per hour. Therefore, they interpret Megalodon as a generally slow cruiser that would engage in short bursts of speed when hunting prey. Another issue with the 3D model and the inferences made from it concerns the metabolic rate of the shark. Megalodon has for a while been thought to have been regionally endothermic, meaning that certain parts of the body or certain tissues were kept above environmental temperatures. Most fish are generally thought to be ectothermic or cold-blooded, meaning their body temperature is generally controlled by the environment. However, regional endothermy is seen in a few different lineages of fish, most notably in lamnid sharks, in tunas, and in billfish, all of which are relatively big, active, fast-moving open ocean species with energetic lifestyles. This was one reason why white sharks and other living lamnids had also been considered suitable analogues for Megalodon to begin with. The logic was that since Megalodon was likely regionally endothermic, a body plan somewhat like a modern lamnid would be expected since these fish are also regional endotherms. However, more new studies were published in 2023 that are relevant to this argument. Firstly, another study by Shimada and colleagues used geochemical evidence to confirm that Megalodon was indeed a regional endotherm, maintaining a temperature of certain certain parts of its body above the environmental temperature. Secondly, and more significantly, two other papers by shark researchers showed that, incredibly, the basking shark and the small-toothed sand tiger shark are also regional endotherms. The enormous suspension-feeding basking shark had generally been considered a sluggish, inactive fish, and the small-toothed sand tiger shark has a very different lifestyle to most of the lamnids, being a deep water species that spends a lot of time near the sea floor. And yet, if both of these modern species are also regional endotherms, then clearly a regionally endothermic shark doesn't need to have a body plan like a lamnid. This again weakens the case for using white sharks and other lamnid species as the basis for Megalodon's body reconstruction. So then, what does all of this mean for the body size of Megalodon? Well, the paleontologist concludes that the 15 to 20 meter estimates that have generally been accepted as a reasonable body size range are actually probably underestimates. The proportionally longer body of Megalodon compared to a white shark suggests that all these different size estimation methods based on great whites have been undershooting the true length of the giant shark. But they do also caution that until we find more complete fossils of the giant that give us a better idea of its exact body proportions, we can't really make reliable estimates of its proper length. So that's pretty much where the science of Megalodon's body size stands at the moment. The history of researchers making size estimates for this enormous predator has been a long, complicated, and controversial one. And it's essentially all ended up with this 2024 paper that says everyone's had it wrong this whole time. You've gotta love paleontology sometimes. I'm sure that this will not be the final word in the debate, however, and I look forward to what's next for the big fishy of death. And please, please can someone go out there and find a complete body fossil of it at some point soon, perhaps? That would be really helpful, thanks. I still haven't seen any real updates on the alleged juvenile megalodon body fossil that was in a private collection at some point. That would also be really nice to see published soon, but I have no idea what's happening with it. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about Megalodon's new slender look, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Also, be sure to head on over to my mum's channel, One World, if you'd like some more Shark Week content. She's just done a video on how to save a functionally extinct population of zebra sharks, plus there's loads more videos from previous years as well. I hope you've liked Shark Week 2024 as a whole too, it's been another fun one this year, so be sure to go and watch all the other shark videos we've done if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Benji Thomas if you'd like for more short form videos about sharks and extinct animals, plus updates from me and the team about what we're doing in life and my own paleontological research.